Here's a question to think about today. Should the voting age in Connecticut be lowered? Right now it's 18. At one point it was 21. Well, there's a move in the Capitol to lower the age to 16. And with us here today is the sponsor of that bill, Chris Ziogas. He's a state representative, a Democrat. Also to talk about it, Chris Davis, a Republican. And gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us here today. And so tell us a little bit about the crux of your idea and your proposal, Representative Ziogas. Well, I mean, the idea came to me from a couple of uh, young men, 16-year-olds, uh, that were politically active. And interestingly, one was a Republican and one was a Democrat. And they thought that their group, their age group, was responsible enough to vote in local municipal elections. I have to emphasize it's local municipal elections, so it's not going to affect the outcome of, of state or federal elections. Because they can't. That's a federal law. They cannot vote. It's the state constitution says 18. Federal law says 18 as well. Can that be changed too or no? Oh, it, I suppose it could, but that's not what we're looking for. Yeah, so there are no states that allow, you know, younger people to vote in presidential elections. Obviously, I don't believe a, so. Yes, no. exactly. Yeah, that's a federal thing. Representative Davis, what do you think about this? Well, I think it's a, potentially an example of some incoherent policies by the Democratic majority in that you have a situation where they want to push that 16-year-olds be allowed to vote in municipal elections. However, they have other policies in place like Governor Malloy's Second Chance Society that says that they're incapable of deciding whether they can commit criminal activities until they're into their 20s. So we're asking that they have the responsibility for electing people at a younger age, but they are incapable of making decisions about what's right or wrong when it comes to criminal activity, and that's concerning to me. Is a 17-year-old, a 16-year-old of uh, sound mind to make these big decisions? You think? I think many of them are, uh, and I wouldn't characterize this as a democratic proposal. This is a proposal I am promoting. I don't know how much support I have anywhere, quite honestly, in terms of how this would eventually come out, but I think we owe it to some of the younger people in our society to give them an opportunity to participate in our local government. Uh, they have a vested interest in it, they're intelligent, they're bright, they're involved, and I think they have an, should have an opportunity. Do we have a count of how many potential voters there are out there between 16 and 18 who are not? I, I couldn't tell you, but I, I'll tell you in my city of Bristol, uh, I'm going to guess there's about 650 high school seniors that would probably at any one time fall into this category. You know, voter turnout tends to be kind of low in these off-year elections anyway. Do you think that the turnout would be high if 16-year-olds were given the right to vote? Well, I look at it and I say we have about 31,000 voters in Bristol, and if you add another 650 to the mix, how much is that going to affect anybody? If their outcome is proportionate to the history, then 50 percent of them will vote. What are your Republican colleagues saying about this? Well, I think it's a, a, another scenario where, you know, it's, it's confusing about what Representative Ziogas or other Democrats might be pushing for. I know they're pushing for early voting. They're pushing for no uh, excuse absentee balloting. Now maybe extending it down to 16-year-olds for, for um, voting in municipal elections. It, it doesn't really make much sense when it comes to some of the other policies that are being pushed by the majority and saying that young people are incapable of making decisions that are, that are good. So I have a lot of concerns about the idea that we would allow younger people to vote but then not ha hold them responsible for some of their other actions that they would have. Representative Ziogas, uh, where does this stand now? Where does it go, this proposal? Well, I think it's uh, go before the GAE committee for uh, JFS on Monday, I believe, the first. Um, if it gets committee approval, then it has an opportunity to move forward. If it gets defeated in committee, then uh, we start over again another day. Good enough. Well, you might have guessed you can't be on Face the State and not be asked about tolls these days because it is the <laughs> thing that all of our viewers care about. We get so many comments on it on Facebook, Twitter, and so forth, and emails. Let's begin with you, Representative Davis. Are you against tolls completely? I do not support the proposals for tolls. And one thing that your viewers should uh, recognize is that what's being proposed would actually be more tolls than I think the rest of New England combined. And in an earlier segment on your show, there was conversations about how you can drive from Florida to Maine and you have to pay every single place you go to. But I can get in my car right now and drive all the way to Montreal, Canada and not pay a single toll. So I think it's important for people to recognize that this is yet another way for them to extract revenue from the residents of the state of Connecticut and do so in a mileage tax system. These aren't project specific tolls. These are going to tax you from the moment you leave your house, get on that highway and drive to work every single day. Representative Zayugas, do you support tolls? I think we need tolls. Would I rather not have them? Yes, I'd rather not have them, but we need them. So how do we answer the demand for infrastructure repair? And there is an argument that's being ignored here is that there's a good portion of the Connecticut population that does not need the highway to get to work every day. 
In my own city of Bristol, 50% of my population works inside of Bristol. They don't have to get on the highway to go to work. However, under the Republican theory, they'll all pay to the maintenance of the highways that they don't use. I would promote that the toll represents more of a user's fee for those that actually use the highways. Is there a compromise for Republicans at all? On tolling? Yes. Or just on, I think the compromise yeah, comes in a reduced in, number. I think the uh, compromise comes in different forms and shapes of ways to pay for transportation rather than necessarily looking for new revenue, ways to take from the residents <laughs> of the state of Connecticut. We look at ways of prioritizing the spending that we do, whether it be through a prioritized progress plan that prioritizes bonding, or you look at ways to reduce costs within the sp special transportation fund in order to prioritize the projects that are necessary to move forward. Chris Davis, Chris Iogos, we thank you for being in the program. Best of luck, gentlemen. When we come back, a big threat against churches, or at least a threat that they perceived as a threat. 45 years ago this weekend, it was on our news, and you'll see it coming up. And we'll also be talking to JT Lewis from Sandy Hook about school safety. We welcome your comments on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram right now.